Well, here we are on the um, left hand crankcase of the uh, XL 250R. And this area is the same as the XR 250R, except the XR 250R has a drain bolt about here where you can drain the oil but uh, there's also a drain bolt uh, typical sump plug just, just about here just about there on uh, both the XL250R and the XR250R so this particular bike it, it's although it's had a fairly easy life at some stage somebody must have holed the crankcase and uh, they welded up the crankcase but when they welded up the crankcase they basically um, welded it so it couldn't be split open so that's all okay I realized that after I bought the bike and took the uh, sump um, guard off I saw this and thought oh, oh dear it's a bit of a problem but probably be able to live with it anyway in my ignorance and I do know quite a bit about these engines but Anyway, in my ignorance, I've learnt um, a very serious lesson. To drain the oil out of this engine and put a new filter and have it all nice and set for riding, I withdrew this bolt. Now this is a, about a 2 inch bolt with a taper on it. And it sits nicely through the fork ends of the spring uh, on the spindle of the gear shift lever. When I pulled the bolt out, the spring sprung off the back of a little tab on the selector plate and dropped down around about there. My only access to this crankcase was through the bolt here. Uh, I spent about a day trying to fish that sucker up uh, with little bits of wire and I couldn't get it. It just wouldn't come up. So then I thought, what am I going to do? look online and I can see some crankcase halves uh, around about a hundred US dollars, hundred and fifty US dollars but then another two hundred US dollars to ship it down to New Zealand so you're looking like about five hundred New Zealand dollars and I'm thinking man the bikes it's just not worth investing this much money into it so what am I going to do? Then I thought well let's think about this process in a lateral way so I've got my trusty drill out and I've made a big gouging gaping hole up under the up into the bottom of the crankcase around about where my finger is here I'll show you soon uh, to gain access into the bottom of the crankcase where I put my finger up and slid the spring uh, which is a forked spring it's it's a coiled spring around a spindle and the two ends of the spring extend out onto a tab on the back of the shift plate, select the plate. Those of you that are familiar with this engine will know that part very well. And it sits on a tab and it's it's not held there very, very securely. There's a little bit of a uh, ridge to stop it sliding off, but the main thing is that the tapered bolt stops the spring from um, falling, falling down. I think this is Honda's little joke. They should have a note or something on this to stop anybody accidentally pulling out this plug. Oh, this um, this bolt to drain oil. Maybe if I'd read the manual before I did the job, I would have picked up on that. But well, I didn't. Anyway, um, if you ever have this happen to you, you got you got no chance really, apart from taking a whole engine out of the bike, lifting the cylinder, and, you know, all that off, and splitting the crankcase, and. Uh, <laughs> putting that little spring bag on the tab and then reassembling the whole thing back together again. And that's going to take you a lot of time, uh, a little bit of money and a few gaskets here and there, and you're going to you're going to be cursing, I'm sure, all the way. If you took it to a mechanic to do it, it's going to cost you quite a lot of time. So, my bike, the uh, sun plug, had been welded over. Okay, part of the damage repair. I think that if you uh, were to take your sump plug out, you may be able to fetter around up there with a screwdriver, a bladed screwdriver, 
and just ease the spring end back onto the tab uh, because you have a fairly good hole there through the sump plug. But then maybe it's not so simple because the sump plug hole is like not a totally round hole, it's like a half a hole goes towards the middle of the crankcase and the outer part of the hole is sort of th is part of the thread so you may have no choice you may have to do what I did and make a big gaping hole there and then put a plate over it um, when you're finished which is what I'm going to be working on next so I have fixed the job my floppy gear lever is no longer floppy and and sagging down sort of uh, where's my finger F sagging down about there uh, which will do, and that's the giveaway. There's, a f there's not much on the internet about it. There's a little bit on a Thumper site, uh, and uh, people having a little bit of advice of how uh, you will have to split the crankcase to um, get the spring back on again. Uh, and that's pretty much the only choice you've got. So I'm really happy with my work. Uh, I have spent all morning this morning, um, all yesterday afternoon, so that's one day, and then another half a day before that. But, well, my time's sort of pretty free these days, so uh, so there we go. Job done. I can uh, put my sprocket cover back on again and uh, assemble the bike and uh, get out there and do some serious riding once I get the uh, Wild Fitness livened up and and all of the uh, registration re-livened. Re so what I'm going to do now is show you underneath the engine uh, the gaping hole and I might be able to get a view up in there as well so just bear with me while I go to the other side we just come around the other side of the bike just tipped it over a bit it's quite dark up there so I'll see if my torch will light it up a bit so here is the <laughs> here is the workmanship of somebody in the past welding the two halves together okay that's all very well but it doesn't make it easy for <laughs> working on the engine in the future these crankcase halves will be toast if I have to um, re redo the um, the engine completely I'll, I'll buy new halves now I'm going to sort of see up inside there and maybe maybe we'll be able to see I get the torch in there as well. Maybe we can see. Oh, it's not going to work very well, is it? Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. There. See the spindle bolt coming. See the bolt coming through there. The tapered end on it, and the bottom of the spring. And there's a top part of the spring on the top part of the bolt. Oh my gosh. There we go, guys. I hope you never have to do this, but if you do, you can do it. So here is the hole position. It's basically exactly where the sump plug is. And I've gouged it all out. And now I'm going to drill and tap a nice hole about there. And another nice hole about there. And I'm going to put a nice solid plate across the whole thing. And, uh, and I'll put a gasket in there and uh, okay it's a little bit of a bodgy job but I'm back in business and I shouldn't have to go back inside this crankcase again uh, the engine is actually in pretty good condition inside it the bearings feel good uh, it was shifting good until I decided to change the oil and pull that pin out so I'll just try to get a better position here with my phone I'm using my phone and it's not the best guys but I just want to get across here that that is the job for there so good luck if you ever have to do it it isn't impossible you do not have to split the engine you can do this but you will have to fix up the hole afterwards but i think it is actually worth the effort uh, rather than taking the whole engine apart so there we go the oh. <laughs> the xl 250r will be ready to ride i'm excited i'm happy with my efforts i spent a lot of hours a lot of time thinking about how i was going to get around this problem and i didn't want to let it beat me and i didn't want to spend 
all of that money for that stupid mistake. So this has cost me nothing in parts, a little bit of time. I'll make up a nice plate, do it all neatly, and I will actually include that in a small video uh, in a day or two's time. So thank you very much for taking the time to view this uh, video. I'll just get up off the ground a moment. It's, a, it's another day in lockdown, except we're now on another level. We're at a, a freer level called level two now. So that means we can get around a little bit, and uh, that's going to make life a little bit easier. Oh, you won't believe it. My header pipe has arrived. And it's pretty close. This is off a KL250. It's Kawasaki. And I'm, I think it's going to fit. I haven't got it. It's just sitting there at the moment. I just, I just came with the, with the carrier uh, a few hours ago. I've got it sitting in this part here. But I'll take, take it all out and I'll redo the whole thing nicely. I think it's going to fit. At the very worst, I feel a little bit of contact at the back here. I might have to put a little bit of an indent in the back of the pipe. So it misses the fins a little bit on the engine. But I'm really happy about that. So, uh, maybe the luck is turning a little bit. You never know. Thanks for viewing. This is John from Auckland, New Zealand. Wishing you all a uh, safe time through this lockdown. Keep, uh, keep active is the big thing, I think. Keep interested in your hobbies. And take your mind off some of the other things that are, that are happening around us at the moment. Um, thank you very much for viewing this video. I'm hoping that it's going to give some of you some guide uh, if you do, like me, take out that bolt and at, the t and then at that time realise what a, what a bad mistake you've done. So uh, it can be fixed. Have heart. Thank you. Bye-bye.